a little bit uh, when we crank. So, wow. <laughs> what is it about today? This place is packed today. Um, so, this is Babbage's difference engine number two, serial number two. And what that means is that it, this is the second design he made of the difference engine. And this is the second one made to that design. Now, when I said the second design he made, he made the design, not the machine. Babbage never saw this, at least not physically. In his mind's eye, he did. Um, so how it got here is a sort of an interesting story. But the man himself is uh, one of the most interesting. Babbage was a man ahead of his time uh, in many ways. Uh, for instance, if you believe the obituary in the London Times, uh, he was baptized a full year before he was born. <laughs> so, uh, always in a hurry. Uh, his baptismal certificate says he was born in 1791. Times. So, what, what's that mean? To give you an idea, he was born in the reign of George III, Mad King George, the king that the colonies rebelled against to form the United States. By the time he had died, Queen Victoria had sent a telegram to the U.S. President over the transatlantic cable. I mean, this was a time of great change in the world. And part of that change was driven by people like Babbage, who was an inventor of many things. He was, he's, he's known as, well, the inventor of this and as a mathematician, but for example, he invented the power catcher. He invented the notion of lighthouses blinking particular patterns per lighthouse. So a ship at sea knew not only there's land over there, but essentially which part of the land that they were approaching was out there, because they could identify the lighthouse codes were on their charts. Um, he invented a number of safety uh, items for the railroad. He invented the ophthalmoscope, which uh, uh, an eye doctor even today will use to examine your retina during, a, during an exam. He invented a, a, a method of colored lighting for theatrical lighting, so plays could have colored spots, stuff like that. I mean, you know, a really interesting guy. Sometimes a difficult to get along with God, which plays into our story a bit. So, he had money. Not a huge amount of money, but he had money. His dad was a successful banker, um, didn't approve of Charles marrying before he had a job. I've been told he actually never had a job. Uh, he was Lucasian professor at uh, Cambridge, but apparently that's not a paying job, it's just an honor. Uh, so other people who had that honor were Sir Isaac Newton, Stephen Hawking. I mean, it's, it, it's a big honor, but you know, they could have thrown in a couple of pounds. But anyway, <laughs> he was comfortable with money. He had a house in London, he had soirees, and hobnobbed with people like Charles Dickens, and uh, Charles Darwin, and Charles Dodson, who you might know as Lewis Carroll. Uh, Charles Lyle, uh, it, uh, and, and uh, oh yeah, um, John Herschel. It, not a Charles, but he uh, discovered life on Mars, if you believe the New York Sun. Uh, you'll notice that even in Babbage's time, the newspapers were pillars of truth and ethics <laughs> with regard to their stories. So, um, one of the things that Charles and John did I mean, you know, this is before we and YouTube and stuff like that. So, so they, they'd sit around sometimes and they would proofread books. They weren't proofreading poetry. It was, you know, Babbage was a bit too literal for, for poetry. There's a story about that. I'm not going to go into that. They proofread this kind of book, which if you, uh, if you have hair of my color. Oh, oh you okay, Ray? I'm okay. <laughs> That's what a page of that um, book would look like. And, and worked in, in the sciences or engineering and stuff like that. You, you probably use books like this. Tables of logarithms, sines, cosines, etc. Because if you had a computation where you needed more accurate
accuracy than you could get out of your slide rule. You know, you did it with pencil paper, maybe an adding machine, but for complex functions, you look them up in a book. So Herschel and Babbage, <coughs> among their interests, would uh, would proofread these books. They'd proofread them. I mean, obviously, they're not going to like do these in their head, because if you could do them in your head, you wouldn't have a book, right? So they'd get tables. they get from two publishers the allegedly same table. And they would like read them to each other and make differences. <laughs> Whether they were different, at least one of them was wrong. <laughs> well, they found a lot of those differences. And at one point, Babbage is said to have explained, my God, that these could be computed by steam. That steam is kind of like the cloud today. It was like the metaphors. <laughs> he didn't literally mean that Ray there would be a stoker. <laughs> he meant mechanically, because the Industrial Revolution was in full swing and anything could be done by steam, well, anything that replaced muscle. Babbage's notion was you could replace thought with a mechanical substitute. Now, because the machine itself is more interesting than me, but i got to talk anyway, I'm going to shut up for a while and I'm going to let Ray Crank it five times. Right. Yes? Five times, and we will see what half that is wrong. What I suggest, that there's two sides yeah. to see, the front side and the back side. People on, you know, somewhere like around in here, move around and back. Over there, move around and back. And the rest of you probably as much as you can, so you can see as much as you can. And let me tell you, on the front side, you're going to see the machine do its abs. It's going to do ads by rotating figure wheels and adding to its partner next door in the call. These are just the sensory story critters, digital story critters, and they're called figure wheels. On the back side, you're going to see the magic mechanism that takes care of the carries. When in the 10 row, uh, you add four to, four to eight, you get a two with a carry into the hundreds row of figure wheels, and that has to be taken care of later. So. Uh, here we go. I'm sorry, folks. It's out of commission. 35 again? Or 33? Yeah, I'm at 4. four. We've been having some difficulty, so mostly we'll have to explain what you were supposed to have seen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> always disappointing to the crowd as well as disappointing to me, but we uh, we can't go yeah. beyond this point yeah. because it needs to have There's the something we don't know. Thing that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and by the way, this is just starting to happen after three years of cranking it yeah. here at the museum. Uh, five, well, almost seven times a week. Uh, we crank the engine like you just about to see it. And, uh, so, so uh, who's going to fix it? We have a repair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We absolutely have a repair. We have probably one of the primary people in the world who knows this machine. And he actually knows it so well, he's built some models out of Meccano, which is the European electric, uh, erector set, that, uh, that also work. So, 